So in fact, I'm going to talk about ADHD and asthma. Um, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, Emily said, I'm a consultant liaison psychiatrist. So I work uh, across physical and mental health. And I'm based in the Evelina Children's Hospital in London. And there are three kind of key topics, I think, in liaison psychiatry. One is uh, about medically unexplained symptoms. <laughs> Secondly, there's a lot of interest in complex neuropsychiatry. And the third area, which I'm going to talk about today briefly, is about the comorbidity of physical health and mental health. Um, I think this is a very, very interesting area. Um, and one of the things that I can say, and I hope the conclusion of, of what I'm briefly going to talk about here, is the, the fantastic opportunities that exist across King's Health Partners for doing research and clinical work in this area. I'm going to talk briefly about uh, the CRIS study, and I know that many of you are already familiar with uh, CRIS, a systematic review that we've conducted, some feasibility study uh, work and screening, and then I'm going to touch briefly on a project, a large-scale project hosted by uh, Guys and St. Thomas's uh, Trust, which is called the CYPHP, or the CHIP project, um, and uh, Dr. Ingrassier is in the audience and, and I'm sure could um, add to this talk. The reason this area, I think, is very, very interesting is that there actually is a, somewhat of a gap in the research in child and adolescent psychiatry. In adult liaison psychiatry, there is uh, a lot of interest in the comorbidity of depression alongside long-term physical health conditions. So some cardiac illness, there might be up to 40% of those patients um, have depression, and the same is true in diabetes, in cancer, in, in almost every physical health condition. Uh, in King's, there is a, a very strong research group in the adult liaison psychiatry world, uh, led by Khalida Ismail, looking at diabetes, amongst other projects. And one of the things that's most interesting is that there are high levels of depression in diabetes, but actually, if you treat the depression in diabetes, you can not only help the patient's mental health, but you can also improve their physical health and their quality of life. So actually, identifying and treating mental illness as a comorbid condition and physical health problems leads to many positive outcomes. In child liaison psychiatry, this is less well studied, possibly because there aren't the same number of long-term conditions, or they don't last as long as they would do in adults. But it's uh, an area that I think could be incredibly fruitful for research. Um, today I'm going to briefly talk about asthma as a trace of condition, uh, to think about what are the comorbid mental health problems that go alongside childhood asthma. The reason that asthma is such an interesting condition, I suppose, is because it's incredibly common, with up to 1.4 million children in the UK have asthma, and it spans from very mild asthma, which is largely, um, doesn't make a huge amount of impact on children's lives, through to children who die of acute asthma attacks. Um, other studies quote something like 21% of children with asthma have mental health problems. We know that depression and anxiety are twice as high in those who have asthma compared to those who don't in children. We know that 20% have suicidal ideation or self-harm compared to 13% in the general population. So whether asthma is causing these uh, psychiatric issues or not, there is certainly an, an interesting area of comorbidity. I'm going to talk about a number of ways in which we can start to address some of these questions in the child and adolescent population. We're very lucky in SLAM that we have the case record interactive search system, which, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of it, is kind of a Google search of uh, medical case notes, of anonymized medical case notes, of all those patients who've been in touch with SLAM services. And um, it's a fantastic resource that I've only more recently learned to kind of use uh, effectively myself, but it's an incredibly useful way of understanding the kind of basic and important clinical data that you can pull out of uh, literally thousands of patients' records. The first piece of work that I was going to uh, talk about was a, a CRIS study that looked at the rate of asthma in children and young people who presented to SLAM services over a time period. Um, we were looking, the key word we were looking for is obviously asthma, and we were limiting to those to people under the age of 18 who were uh, resident in one of the sl four slam boroughs over a certain period of time. This idea, there were approximately, or there were exactly 10,451 children who, were present, who had presented and had uh, mental health case records between 2009 and 2014, which we were going to look at. Of those patients, of the 10,000, um, we found that 1,271 had asthma as a uh, key comorbid diagnosis in their case notes. And this is having eliminated those who where asthma is described as something in their family members or the patient did not have asthma and the patient was tested for asthma, but actually looking at those who had a definite uh, recorded diagnosis of asthma in their case notes. So 1,271. Things got a bit more interesting when we looked at this 1,271 patients. 
that there was not a, a normal distribution, I suppose, of mental health conditions. They weren't, they weren't distributed in a way that was consistent with maybe the population prevalence. The most obvious uh, primary mental health condition was ADHD by some margin. 15% had uh, autistic spectrum as their primary psychiatric diagnosis, uh, just under 10% had the conduct disorder or ADD, Much few, uh, many fewer had depression and schizophrenia and uh, like with the rest of the slam case records, um, many had no diagnosis. But this figure of 43.6, so a really substantial number, had ADHD as the primary diagnosis uh, alongside their asthma. This graph shows us uh, looking at this in a slightly different ma uh, manner, where we're looking at the main mental health conditions of those who have presented between 2009 and 2014 um, to SLAM services. And what we see is that of, on the middle column, um, we see that uh, of the 10,000 patients presenting, 1,662 had a primary diagnosis of ADHD, whereas, which represented 15% of the cases, whereas those who had asthma, it was a much higher um, uh, number. The point being that there is an alteration of something 2.71 increased likelihood of having asthma and ADHD in this population. We were then interested to see whether this is a figure that has been looked at or, or, a, or a comorbidity that's been looked at by other people. And we conducted a systematic review of asthma and ADHD. <clears throat> Looking at um, the literature that was available, we found 30 studies that we believed that covered up this issue. Well, either these were populations of patients with asthma who'd had a screening for mental health conditions, or this was a population of uh, patients with ADHD where they were looking at physical health conditions. But of the 30 studies that we were able to find, and this was done with colleagues uh, Dr. Hamayun and others, we found the 24 studies that were in existence that found a positive association between ADHD and asthma. This was, however, a very heterogeneous population. There was, uh, I think, about six different countries from which these populations have been taken. Some were more clinical samples, some were more um, population studies. Um, but the rates of comorbidity ranged from 1.59% to 36.5%. So a large range, but nonetheless, there seemed to be an overwhelming positive association between asthma and ADHD. The other two things that came out that were very interesting from the systematic review was that the gender difference was eliminated. So while there is a, a clear male preponderance of, um, as, of ADHD of, in ADHD, this seemed to disappear when we looked at this comorbid physical and mental health population. And we're not quite sure why that might be. The other thing that came across that was very significant was that there was a higher comorbidity in urban populations. Now this, you know, there are, there are a number of sociodemographic and sociological um, hypotheses that we can put behind this, whether there's something to do with pollution in, in the cities or people are drawn towards uh, in the cities if they have more psychiatric comorbidity, um, we can speculate about why that might be the case. But the take home message were there was a strong and consistent, or overwhelmingly consistent, association between the two conditions. We were then interested in kind of delving a little further and we conducted a feasibility study of consecutive referrals to the Evelina Children's Hospital of um, <coughs> young people between 4 and 16 years who were admitted for an acute exacerbation of asthma. Now the advantage of this is that um, there is firstly from case notes and secondly from also the larger epidemiological studies whether there was a definitive laboratory diagnosis of asthma because some patients with uh, bronchitis, some patients with just a general wheeze may be misdiagnosed or overdiagnosed as asthma whereas in this population we're able to say because they were admitted, because they were under the care of the respiratory uh, team we know they definitely had uh, a diagnosis of asthma. Um, what we found was, having done the, the ARCAD scale and the SDQ scale, that 68% uh, of the patients were outside the normal range for at least one, and 36% of the patients were outside the normal range for at least three of the subscales of the SDQ. So a highly uh, psychiatrically, psychologically morbid population in reality. And we know that these were broadly driven by the conduct problem score and the hyperactivity score. So of those with asthma admitted as inpatients to a children's hospital, many had uh, definable psychiatric problems, and these were broadly in the regions of the conduct issues and hyperactivity issues. So again, consistent with some of the other findings from the literature. So why should this be the case? And, and as with every study, we, we look at this association and think about the direction of causality and whether there are any confounding effects. How could asthma lead to ADHD, how indeed could ADHD lead to asthma? Uh, one could argue that um, patients with asthma have a number of factors to do with 
um, living situation, to do with activity, to do with behaviour that might lead to frustration and conduct problems. It's very difficult to imagine why ADHD would cause asthma, but it may be that children with ADHD have poor adherence to medication, uh, have poorer compliance with treatment protocols, and therefore may be um, less able to or less effective at accessing their respiratory care, thus making their asthma a bit worse. And besides that, there are a number of com uh, confounding factors that might drive both of these things that we have to think about. Thinking about these uh, different aspects which could be driving this association, the literature tells us that there is some evidence of genetic association, that ADHD has some immunoregulatory genes, such as STAT6, SNAP25, and some uh, nhc link genes, so it could be on a genetic level. Uh, one study compared children with atopic asthma with non-atopic asthma and showed that there were differences in rates of ADHD between the two. Does this suggest any kind of immunological story that drives the, difference, the, the high level of uh, comorbidity? The things that are probably the most uh, strong drivers but yet to be kind of investigated probably is whether it's to do with sociological factors such as deprivation. Uh, one hypothesis might be that uh, mothers who smoke during pregnancy, we know that has a, an increased likelihood of conduct problems in children and behavioural problems in children, and if those mothers then continue smoking after pregnancy when their children are, are young, whether that is in fact driving the asthma and the respiratory problems in the house. Could it be about poor housing? Could this be about educational level, uh, amongst other things? Two of the other kind of interesting observations, I suppose, that many of you may already be familiar with, but beta agonists, um, such as salbutamol, uh, increases agitation, albeit on a short-term basis. And also, children with more severe asthma will be on corticosteroid medication, and we know that that can increase uh, levels of agitation, reduce concentration, and actually lead to kind of some disinhibition, which could be arguably at some point mistaken for a clear case of ADHD. The other confounding factor could be an overdiagnosis by, by those seen in paediatric clinics. And this could, of course, work two ways, that a respiratory paediatrician might see very active children and uh, refer them for a diagnosis of ADHD. Conversely, doing an ADHD clinic, one might pick up more on, on wheeze and respiratory problems. So whether this is actually an artificial inflation of, of comorbidity. But these are all hypotheses that, that I think could be tested and, and looked at in a, if we think forwards to a, a large kind of um, cohort study. So what's the, what should be the reaction to this? Well, firstly, there is a strong argument that we should be screening for mental illness in those with physical health conditions. We know from the adult literature that 60% of um, those with depression are undiagnosed in those who have physical illness, so there is definitely a gap between what we know about and what we don't know about. We know that from the adult population, if we treat depression, that has a number of important uh, effects such as improving their physical health as well as mental health and reduces service costs, uh, costs of health service usage. So there's a strong argument to do that. One of the other things that we can pick up on in these situations is maybe managing the parental mental illness uh, because we were able to enable parents to attend their respiratory clinics, for example, more effectively. Uh, a mental health team can manage risk and also can liaise with the family, the school, the social work, housing and police to bring things together like difficult housing or even indeed the kind of smoking issues in the, uh, in the parents. And we also know that this could, um, we could offer specific treatments for these conditions. The two things I was going to finish on and are a major initiative that's presently existing in, um, in South London under the auspices of uh, Guys and St Thomas's Trust, which is called the CHIP Project or the Children and Young People's Health Partnership. Um, and this is a large project looking at two tracer conditions about enhancing the service models of care, which includes both uh, um, the physical health care, but also, and interestingly, it's got a significant mental health component, and my colleague in the audience is uh, leading on this, who will be enhancing children's with asthma's care and epilepsy's care in a way of hopefully improving their physical health as well as their mental health. So to bring this together, um, what I want to say to you is firstly that CAMS Liaison Psychiatry I think has uh, an opportunity for some significant research in the same way it's been conducted in the adult populations. And secondly that there is a fantastic opportunity within King's Health Partners to conduct this research. We know we've got the CRIS database and the HES database and if we're able to link the physical and the mental health case records there's a very strong a tool for being able to look at this. We know that the psychological medicine CAG here has an interest in this research area. We know that there may be an interesting immunological story to tell 
about the, the immunological basis or relationships or, or consequences of ADHD. One thing I've not talked about and we want to introduce in our service is imparts, which is an opportunity to screen routinely every child that, that comes in with an asthma diagnosis. And lastly, we can see this actually does contribute to service delivery and service uh, conflagration so that in a way that will allow us to um, support these issues, even if we don't fully understand them. Thank you very much.